Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I'm doing, girl. We lived through quite a storm yesterday. Uh Uh-huh. Some tornadoes this weekend as well. Yes. About 15 miles north of us. Mm -hmm. And then I guess yesterday morning, my husband woke up at like five in the morning to 85 mile an hour sideline winds. I don't know what that means, but he said the rain was going horizontally fast. Yeah. And and your backyard was destroyed. (laughs) My fencing. (laughs) trees down in our neighborhood power out for like 12 hours branches everywhere my patio oh you didn't see it it was like bowed oh god from water so we had to go up there with a drill and get all the water out he hasn't gone up to look at the roof yet yeah he needs to yeah because that was scary yeah i was woken up in the middle of the night from the winds i'm like Mm -hmm. dang we were fine though we didn't lose power though not at all no shit my power was out forever and i'm also attached to a community well so when the power goes out my water goes out so i can't even wash my butt honey she was so unhappy i'm so unhappy (laughs) like when i don't have like my creature taurus comfort for sure I am inconsolable. Oh, yeah. That's I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> that's why when your husband and your daughter go camping in June, we ain't going. Oh, God, no. Because they go camping in the woods where they shit in a bucket. And, I mean, how like, is that okay with no, you? No, thank you. <laughs> My husband's going to be sleeping out in the elements. I know. Your wife is going to be in the cab of his truck. But I'm like, what about Bigfoot? Yeah. What about feral people Aliens. roaming in the forest? I know. I'm just scared for you, but I'm not going to go with you. Absolutely not. If We're going to be hanging out. That's right. If I go <laughs> camping, I'm at the Marriott. Yes. I'm at the Four Seasons, honey. I'm at the <laughs> hotel bar waiting for you to come back. No, I'm never going camping. No. Like, I have to be clean. <laughs> Me too. I have to be able to wash my hands, yeah. wash my but have clean clothes. I'm not out here being grimy in the world. No, ma'am. No, I've done enough of that. Yeah. But yeah, it was scary. And that is why, by the way, this recap of Seeking Sister Wife is a little late because I had no power. Yeah. I had no water. That's where our studio's at. Yeah. All right. Before we get into what I guess is the season finale. Unbeknownst to us. I had an inkling. I didn't. They were wrapping stuff up. I thought we had at least one more. Yeah, no. Rude. Yeah. um, Before we get into it, though, there was a bit of gossip last week about those tricky little Davis wives and husband. Did you hear about this? Yeah. On the Reddits. Yes. Apparently, this Jasmine woman from Colorado (laughs) who came over and slept in their big bed and got in that hot tub, Mm -hmm. honey, with all of her germs and everything. Yuck. Apparently... They've been knowing Jasmine since like 2021. There is actually a post on Nick Davis's Instagram where he's referring to Jasmine as their girlfriend. Yeah. Like three years ago. Yeah. This is all a work. This makes no sense. Why? But I mean, like, okay, to be fair, this show has been filmed years prior because Danielle Merrifield's pregnant in these episodes and she has the whole ass baby already yeah but didn't she just have the baby within the last six months well like seven or eight months so i mean it's i think these scenes with the davis family were filmed in 2023 they are full-on lying which calls into question anything they're talking about in any of these episodes so as they're blah blah blahing about Mm -hmm. whether they want to invite jasmine into their family i'm like shut up yeah fakery and fraudery y'all been dating y'all been fucking and you guys probably broke up yeah. That's what it seems like mm-hmm. because then now you're bringing her on for what? Clout. Television? Or to continue their storyline to Cringe. stay on our TVs. Cringe. And irrespective of whether they knew Jasmine or not, I'm bored. Yeah. She's boring. They're boring. Very they ain't boring. given nothing. No, except that um, Paisley uh, dress shirt that Nick Honey. was wearing in this episode, that bright orange with that black vest and that like gemstone (laughs) somebody on reddit called him a vampire magician (laughs) i'm like that is exactly what that's giving it's giving vampire magician like what is that he thinks he's classy good for you i guess well do you want to get into it yeah okay so this is the season finale season Uh, five episode i want to say 13 entitled seeking our forever our forever we're looking for our forever which nobody has nobody can find their forever (laughs) because they're all weird yes and gross unspeakably weird should we warn everybody before we get into the recap about what 
hide your wife, hide your kids. Oh, God, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody, please, we must warn you, our disclaimer, please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have dumb opinions and we're not going to apologize about it. So if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, honey. But if you're down and ready to talk about some polygamists, some losers, <laughs> welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down and ready to talk some mad shit with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We're going to start um, covering couples therapy yes. with Dr. Orna and we're reacting to MILF Manor yes, over we there. Are. Oh my God, that is a train wreck. We're also wrapping up Welcome to Plathville yes. season three. That's the last season that we have to talk about and then we are all caught up and yep. ready for the new season. Ah. We got a lot going on on Patreon, so come over and join us and if you are watching on youtube please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because everything you do helps us to grow the community so thank you in advance thank you and now we may begin all right well let's start with the davis family because they were like the meat of the episode it was quite heavy on the davis family <laughs> quite heavy on the meat <laughs> yeah. no pun intended yeah. in that hot tub scene Girl, honey i'll stop right we there see them. we're in the hot tub with danielle and nick and she's grinding all up on him with her big old juicy booty right and they're talking about her feelings with Jasmine, which is just like so dumb. Well, especially now that we know that they've been knowing Jasmine for years before filming this. So yeah. why are we even having this fake conversation? But whatever, go on. It's so dumb because Nick's like, I'm just really concerned about your feelings, Danielle. I want to make sure you're okay with me fucking Jasmine and her uh -huh. sleeping in our big 12 foot bed. And Danielle's like, sure, like we can take it day by day. It's going to be great. I think she's cool. And then Jasmine goes and sleeps with them in their big 12-foot mm -hmm. bed, which I'm just like, ew. But are we going to just gloss over her booty and everything? I said in the big old tub? juicy I booty. know, but I'm just like, there is not a world where, <laughs> even when I was my most beautiful honey svelte and everything toned nice and tight, I would be sticking my ass up in a hot tub on TV. Girl. I just like, I mean, maybe I'm just an old woman. I'm an old you gal. Old. <laughs> With different values. But I was just like, put the ass away. Put that ass away. I feel like the producers did her so dirty. They because did. They did this last episode too. They showed her big booty and ev and everybody's big booties. Yeah. Coming out it's of the hot her. tub and everything. And I'm not body shaming or nothing. I'm we love saying, a big booty. I love a big booty. Hey. She got a big booty. <laughs> she got a big booty. <laughs> so, you, you do have a big booty honey. you got an apple bottom jeans with the booze with it's the just because you're jealous eh. you are packing i am i got <laughs> yeah. no booty no i got concave booty you wish you had danielle's davis's a little booty. bit of that <laughs> booty would go a long way with me but i'm like why are the producers like just showing that big old frame right there i would be so embarrassed yeah it's hard to miss it's very <laughs> <laughs> very hard to miss but hey if nick likes it nick really seems to nick love seems that to ass. love that Come ass. On now. he seems to like a big old ass that's fine he does. he does but anyway after they get out of the hot tub they go and sleep in the big 12 foot bed jasmine has to be in the middle and i'm just thinking like that's so uncomfortable and i'd be so hot i'd be yeah. so i would be overheating i don't want to even sleep with somebody yeah, no. <laughs> like, just, like, in your friend. marital bed yeah. like there's a line down the middle yeah. of your king size bed and you're like do not pass that's how i am i like i, I good night yeah now go over there you have like an actual I line do. you have like a body pillow I have a in body the pillow and i'm like this is my line these are my boundaries ariana <laughs> maddox i have a boundary yeah don't cross it don't at all mm -mm. and then the next morning after no, no, they, no, no, no. yeah let's talk about that more what about the big 12 of <laughs> well, bed i'm just like Oh my God, that's an impressive bed. Yeah, they had to order it. I know, but I mean, like, they all actually fit. I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> like, they all kind of had room to maybe oh, roll yeah. over. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was just like, wow, that's a, it's a really great bed. Oh, yeah. That's my only thought. Totally. <laughs> Do you think they did anything that night? They had to. All of them were like Sneaky kinda, fingers. Yeah, all of them were kind of tipsy. They were all kind of flirty. Like the last episode, Danielle's like, don't talk to me about my favorite color in the, the hot tub because the hot tub's for baby making. That's like, right. I don't know. It just seemed very weird. Yeah. I was wondering if there was any hanky panky going on. Although they said they wouldn't do that. 
mm-hmm. because this is their first weekend with Jasmine. Now we know better. Yeah. So maybe they were vlogging. I think they're if they're lying about Jasmine being their secret girlfriend, mm-hmm. they lying about being polygamous. I think they're all fucking each other. Yeah. And that's fine. You do you. Let's it's get nasty. It on. But you do you. Yeah. And then the next morning, Jasmine wakes up and she like slithers on out of the bed. Okay, so let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So are we just supposed to pretend that nobody understands that there's a camera in the room? <laughs> there's a whole ass camera man in the room. It it's was just cringe. fake. It was just fake. It was cringe. Super fake. It's not believable. No, not at all. And then she goes upstairs and magically Danielle's the only other one awake. And so she's like, oh, perfect. We can chat about our relationship and all of this stuff. And Danielle proceeds to just like talk at her on the patio right. at like seven in the morning. And if that was me, I'd be like, don't talk to me. Yeah. Let me get some coffee. Yeah. Like, let me acclimate to the morning, but no, you're trauma dumping on me about how hard it is to be a sister wife. And like, I mean, this is going great and everything, but don't get it twisted. Things could get really hard. Like, I've really struggled because I didn't know if I could live in this kind of a structure or arrangement. So things can get tough. And Jasmine's like, (sighs) okay, yeah, that's great. I'm bored. And it makes sense why she's having that reaction, knowing what we know now, which is that she's been dating and yeah. fucking them for years at yeah. this point. Or she's probably broken up with them and she's just there for the paycheck. Like, it's just so weird and cringe. And Danielle, I'm like, shut up. You're acting like you are so wise when you literally moved out like three episodes ago mm-hmm. because you freaked out about dating and now you're fine with it. And now you're acting like it's all fine. Well, it's important to her because she's going to be the one that actually marries Jasmine. So she wants to like fall for Jasmine. She wants to feel it in her heart and in her butt. And like her this pussy. is yeah, like uh, this is a meaningful relationship that I can get behind. But to her chagrin, Jasmine is reserved. Mm-hmm. She's not really engaging in the conversation. She's, she's checked bored. out. Yeah. She's bored. She's over it. Yep. And then eventually Jasmine packs up her suitcase and leaves, which I thought was weird that she brought so much stuff over just for a night Mm -hmm. slumber party, but whatever. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And then the family kind of gets dressed, gets dressed in their vampire regalia. (laughs) What the heck was that? And his medallion eating takeout. Eating takeout <laughs> from like Olive Garden. Something it was like, that. like some sort of a chicken fettuccine, mm-hmm. some sort of a Caesar salad option from the Olive Garden. Nick put it on an actual plate. Yeah. But all the wives kept it in the plastic receptacle. In true trashy it's, fashion. It's very, very interesting family we got going on. Did you notice that they had like a little prayer before they ate too? Yes. I'm like, what are you praying to? <laughs> what are you praying to is the right question. The vampire who are you, god. <laughs> who are you praying to? <laughs> Why are you praying? What are you you praying praying to the Matrix? (laughs) Are we praying for some dimensional shift from the fifth dimension? Are you praying for the ascended masters to join (laughs) you in the dining room? Like, who are you praying to? I know, because they were talking about how their spirituality was grounded in science. So I'm like, what? (laughs) <laughs> and then you're wearing this big old vampire medallion right. and this orange paisley shirt. I don't understand. I, n- it's all very confounding. Well, and a couple people, I think they commented on YouTube and some people DM'd us on Instagram. They were talking about how they might practice like witchcraft because some people noticed like some crystal balls and some witchy stuff in the background on mm-hmm. their shelves. I wasn't paying that much attention because I get really bored during the Davis yeah. family se- uh, sequences. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're witchy. Yeah, I think there was a picture of Nick in his study because he's a renaissance man. An intellectual. And he philosophizes. And I did see a crystal ball, but I'm sure it's the same one I have from Home Goods. Yeah. That I spent $8 <laughs> on. It's only from Home Goods. Well, you're kind of woo-woo. I am a little woo-woo, but I mean, I'm not into scrying necessarily, but I'm not going to judge him because I have very eclectic spiritual tastes. Yeah. But he's like got all of his metaphysical books laid out so everybody can see what he's reading. I'm like, you are so pretentious. They're so cringy. And I was actually looking on their Instagram, like their Davis family Instagram. And if you scroll down far enough, there's like pictures of their personal life and stuff. And there's photos of... Nick taken by the wives probably April of him like in a collage of him like studying and like <laughs> writing reports and stuff and reading and they're like no. they're like we love our husband and what he does for the family I'm like what what is he reading? doing yeah and, and doing book reports <laughs> yeah. for himself does he make you read them and then answer any questions you might have I'm like is he publishing these like what are you no doing? he's not publishing these. I wish scientific reports about <laughs> metaphysics 
Oh, he's a preposterous. The All of these people are preposterous. Absolutely people. ridiculous. Oh, I love it. And this conversation around the Olive Garden takeout is just about Jasmine mm -hmm. and whether or not she's a good fit for the family. And Danielle finally uses her voice. Ah. I was so proud of her for speaking ah. up. And she says, yeah, I don't think Jasmine is the right fit. I think she's kind of weird and she's kind of reserved. And, you know, I just think we need to, like, see other options. And April's like, yeah, I totally agree. I'm, like, so proud of you, Danielle, for speaking up. And then Nick's like, well, I'm disappointed. I wanted to fuck. <laughs> I wanted to fuck Jasmine. Ew. But all of the wives vote and they agree with young Danielle. And mm -hmm. Nick's like, hey. I'm going to respect it. And then I think it's April who says something like, you know, let's keep dating. Let's date another one or two women and yeah. see what happens. And this is where Nick gets really excited because he's got more Poonani in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. He can't wait. Trash bag Poonani. Yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. That's what he likes. Well, he attracts what he is. That's the law of attraction. He should know that. There you go. <laughs> That's right. He should know that. <laughs> and the end. That's the yeah. Davis family. Yeah. They're going to continue seeking and nobody cares. No. I'm sure they're going to be on another season though. Why do we reward people who fake and fraud their life? I don't know. It never works. It's happening on Vanderpump Rules. I know. It happened on that Seeking Brother Husband. You just got a bunch of fraudsters. It's uninteresting and we can sniff it out. We are very intelligent records. We are. Also intuitive. Yes. Like, please don't come back with a fake ass storyline. It sucks. It's going to be fake, though. You know it is. Because it's TLC and they don't listen. And then we have the Ryans, which were kind of boring. Well, they were just wrapping that whole arc up, but they're just so gross and old. Um, <laughs> old. I mean, <laughs> being 10 years younger than me. So thanks for that. But like Becky's hair. I'm like, is it wet? Did you just get out of the shower before it's the oily. cameras came over? Or is it oily because you oily. don't take showers? Like, ew, you people are gross. Well, and Justin, whatever his name is, it Justin? It is I Justin. can't even remember because he's so forgettable. He's so blank. Yep. But his face, I'm just like, I can't. How does anybody look at him and be like, yeah, I want that. I have no idea. I mean, don't look at me. I have no idea. He's repugnant. He's repulsive. He's so and gross. he doesn't have a personality. Like if he had something Hun. like to talk about, if he, he goes was to the gym, creative, if he was expressive, he works was out. ambitious and interested in something, maybe we could sit down and have nachos with him and Yari. Yeah. But he brings nothing. To, he's a bore. He's, he's a dud. A bore. <laughs> yes. God, both of them are terrible. They are. And it's just him coming home from his date from Yari last episode. I'm like, why are we just now seeing the end of this? I don't understand. And he's telling her what Yari said, which is that she can't share a man. Mm -hmm. And Becky is like, well, does that mean she can't share you? Or does that mean she can't share any man? Or she can't be a polygamist? Like, what does that mean? And Justin's like, I don't know. I didn't ask. I didn't, I didn't care. <laughs> I was wondering if I could make out with her. That's all I really was thinking about. But That's I don't know. It. He's totally checked out of the conversation. And Becky just wants more information. He's like, I, I don't care. 100%. And they're still like, but her over Stephanie. Like, they're comparing Yari to Stephanie. And I'm like, man, y'all are really hard pressed over her, aren't Yo. And they're like, well, we'll keep going with Yari. Like, maybe she'll come around. Maybe she will adjust to our lifestyle and or anybody else we happen to meet that would be interested in us. <laughs> My husband's Anyone walking else. through like he doesn't watch our shows. Yeah. But he's walking through on his way to poop in the bathroom. And he's like, these people are just swingers. And I'm yes! like, That's what Beatrice has been saying. That's what I've been saying this whole time. I would love a TLC show about swingers. Oh, my God. Bring it on. But like a bunch <sighs> of lying polygamists who are swingers. I don't got respect back for that me neither oh my god could you imagine a show about oh, swingers i would, I would love, that. love that i would love that, that. would be so entertaining but oh they're so god, yes. stuck to like this you know sister wife trope probably because of the show sister wives like they're just trying to like get more people from that fandom over to this because sister wives is on its way out but i don't know just bring me some weird couples man. i would love that but i think that they might attach some sort of an, a moral issue to swinging. Like maybe they think people will think they're debaucherous. Or they are. They're perverts. Not necessarily <laughs> you judgmental lesbian. <laughs> like that they might be perverts. And so by attaching it instead to polygamy, they can feign some sort of spirituality mm. or this high morality that they do not possess. Like the Ryans objectively do not possess any values or morals. Right. That I can detect. I don't think any of these They're couples scum. have. Yeah. They're part of a fucking apocalyptic cult. They've never apologized for their affiliation with same. So, no. No. And why are they on my TV? Get them off. Get them off. Do not bring them back for another season because no. nobody wants to see them. No. 
And then last but not least, we have the Merrifields. Oh, wow. Oh, this was great. So, okay, stop. Okay. Stop right there, Beatrice. Because if I recall correctly in Raccoons, do correct me if I'm wrong. Last week, when we were at the preview section, Mm -hmm. we saw Garrick Merrifield and the lovely Miriam. Mm -hmm. And he was petting her and sexually taking advantage of her by touching her and she was disgusted and i think she said in the preview like stop touching me and it appeared that he got upset yep where was that in this episode i don't know where was that in this episode they showed it in the preview it's one thing if you're showing it in the preview from the the beginning of the season and maybe as we've gone along it ends up on the chopping room floor right yeah but you just showed it last week yeah as if we were going to see it this week and then it's cut out of the episode. What? I don't understand. What? It doesn't make any sense. It's like VPR. Like all of these shows do this. Like why are you showing me previews for scenes that I'm not going to actually see? Mm-hmm. The Shabooties. They did it with the Shabooties yes. too. With the Salahuddin's. I could have swore we saw Nyla get up from the couch mm-hmm. all mad at Naeem and stalk away because he said he would be intimate with one of the girls that they were seeing. I could have swore there was a scene out at a restaurant that wasn't with young Alexis, but yes. I could be wrong about that. But I mean, like what happened to those scenes? Yeah, I don't understand understand like do they think we're stupid do the producers think we're stupid yes i mean we're gonna continue watching like that's the problem right that is the problem we are gonna keep watching the show because we like the show but then you rob us of all of the good little meaty bits and instead we have to see danielle davis and her Mm. ass coming out of the hot tub Mm -hmm. and stupid shit like that like Mm. i don't need that i want to see some fights yeah there there does seem to be like a lot of filler and a lot of padding like the entire davis storyline seems to be filler and padding but like if there was an actual fight with the shibooties i would have wanted to see that if there was an actual boundary with miriam and garrick i really would have loved to see that because you already know tlc that most of us hate him oh yeah that's the shit we want to see yep but like we didn't get any of that we were robbed i am confounded and confused and i was actually kind of disappointed in the whole garrick and miriam date in general because i thought it was going to be a little bit more creepy like there were some moments where he's like petting her obviously and he's getting really close to her scooting up sitting right next to her putting his leg on her inner thigh like a fucking creeper and miriam's obviously uncomfortable and she does kind of like push him off of her Mm -hmm. and then she says yeah i'm uncomfortable with how touchy-feely he is but that's it well, she says, and I need to take it slow. And he's like, that's great. Nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. I thought their conversation was very strange. First and foremost, I had no idea it was Garrick's dream to design women's clothing. Yeah. I feel like there's something in there that's very telling about mm-hmm. him. <laughs> I wonder, and I have, I'm actually, I don't know what it is, but that's, that's weird to me. Oh, yeah. Very weird. Well, he's designed the jewelry and stuff for the sister wives. I forgot about that. Yes. And I imagine he's probably involved in the interior design of the one home that they sold, which mm-hmm. is the one that he lives in. Mm. Yeah. But um, I just found that to be very strange. And then when she brought up the hijab mm. and she asks him, well, would you mind if I wore it? And he's so uncultured and uneducated like he hasn't even thought about something like that that he brought this muslim woman from michigan into his house who's from a different religion and culture and who might be somebody who wears a hijab like it never occurred to him i know and so he's like well i mean i want to see you because you're pretty though yeah i want to see your pretty face and she's like well i mean at home i can take it off and he's like okay that's fine like he's so dumb he's so weird why haven't you thought about this i don't know and i thought he thought it was a compliment. Like, he's like, oh, I'd rip the hijab off of you because you're so beautiful. And I'm like, ew, you're gross, That would dude. be terrible to do to somebody. That's really terrible. And even when she sat down on the couch in his talking head, he was like, she's so curvy and juicy and delicious. Full like, figured. So fucking weird. She's full figured. Oh, my like, God. Like, are you saying she's plus sized? I'm like, what are you actually saying? Because... First of all, she's not plus size. No. Second of all, there's nothing wrong with being plus size. But yeah. why are we talking about the size of her body? And then he's talking about her makeup. And dolled he up. really loves that she can be dolled up because some women don't know how to do that. I'm just like, oh, are you talking about your own wife? I think he was. Are you talking about Danielle? I think he was. I think Yikes. that was a total dig. And I'm like, you're so gross. You're only in it for just the poon. 
it's so weird and then what did you think about their conversation where he was like i was a bad boy once i started a gay oh my god what was the name of his, his only thugs or something always what? thugging crew oh always with a K. thugging crew and i saw his little <laughs> white boy menacing pictures and yeah. i'm just like oh god cringe and apparently he started oh, it in buena vista colorado wait what he started it there. Is he from there? Yeah, Miriam said that he's like sixth generation. Oh God, from I this can't small keep town. up with this guy. I know they were in Wisconsin for a period of time. Yeah. Maybe that's where Danielle's from. I don't know. I don't have any idea, but I think he's ridiculous, mm -hmm. and I would never have admitted that in polite company. No, much less on national television. It was totally giving me JoJo Siwa energy. Oh, I was a bad girl. Uh, I was a bad boy. Uh. I'm gonna start something called gay pop. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> ever heard of that ever. <laughs> yeah oh, really very strange yeah nobody believes that he, he shook, started again. he shook people down for protection <laughs> as okay. a 14 year old teenage boy whatever i love it oh it's God. delightful so cringe and then after oh no they were talking about um living in the small town that was the other mm -hmm. aspect because he's like oh could you see yourself living here and she's like i don't know it's kind of small and like what if people are racist i guess if you're out in buena vista that could be an issue I mean, if it's a small mountain town, I can see it. Yeah. But I'm like... I don't doubt it. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought she was like not interested in, in any of it at all. Yeah. But I mean, also, Garrick hadn't even thought of that either. No. Like what the experience might be for someone, a woman of color, to come to your small podunk one gas station town mm -hmm. and what that experience would be like for her. Yeah. But he, he doesn't think about anything because he doesn't have a brain in his head. No. He's an unconscious person. Yes. And then psychopath. A background person. Yes. And then after their date, she goes to bed and Garrick's like, oh, she was very standoffish. I'm like, really? Because she didn't want you petting her right. inner thigh yeah. the entire date and you sitting there mouth breathing on her oh, neck God. like, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, I know. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe how they cherry pick their values I like know. because he's drinking alcohol mm -hmm. again he looks drunk he is definitely taking advantage of her he's trying to sexualize her and take liberties with her person and I'm like all of that is unscriptural and ungodly but it's okay because you want to do it yes because God spoke to him personally and said yeah I'll give you the pass yeah it's fine mm -hmm. and then we flash forward like three weeks later whatever and shit went down. Yeah. Apparently Natalia was not happy to begin with mm -hmm. that they were even thinking about courting another woman, yet alone flying her out from Michigan. Natalia was not okay with that, so much so that she fucking dumps them. Well, and furthermore, in her message to production, right before she dumps them, she claims that Garrick and Danielle promised her that they wouldn't go a courting and seeking other women until she was actually in the states and in their home and she could participate in the process so mm -hmm. they promised her that and of course immediately set about breaking that promise and they are liars again ungodly unholy unscriptural yep and this is the same shit that they told Roberta too. That was why Roberta was super pissed off too because he was courting other people for the show because he didn't end up going through with any of them. I'm sure he fucked them, but whatever. Mm -hmm. He did the same exact thing to Roberta. Roberta was unhappy about it. Like, why can't you wait until I'm in the States? Right. And then we can meet and it'll be fine and I'll feel like I'm included, but now I feel excluded. So it's the same shit. Yeah. Different person. And then Natalia also says in her little Skype interview that garrick demanded total submission i wonder what that actually means yeah that's weird because it doesn't seem like danielle's super submissive to him well, i mean i guess i mean yeah. she's probably been beaten down yeah. over many years and thinks it's her bright idea to be his wingman or right. wingwoman but I'm wondering what kind of things he was actually asking of Natalia. Yeah. And demanding that she submit to, whether that would be like not being around other men. Mm. Did it have any sort of a financial implication? Like how she spends her money, how she spends mm. his money, whether she sends them money. Like, I don't know. I wish I had learned more from that. Yeah, that would have been interesting to know. But of course... In her Skype interview, she concludes with, I don't want to have a relationship with either one of them. Mm -hmm. They haven't really even talked to me since they moved back to America. So fuck them. Right. And then Danielle, <clears throat> on her own cell phone selfie, she's crying, crying again. And it's cringe. Again, like a repeat of season four where she was sobbing uncontrollably because Roberta broke their hearts. And now she's crying it's again. It's because you guys are lying, though. 
And you are luring these people yeah. into your home life under false pretenses. Like, where's the responsibility? Instead, you get up on your couch interview and you call Natalia immature, not a team player, yeah. needs to grow up. I'm that like, was wild. Okay, guys. And Garrick being like, that was my wife, you know, but now it sucks that it doesn't work out, but we'll continue seeking. She was never your wife. No. You never married her. Like, Miriam strikes me as very intelligent mm -hmm. and well-adjusted, as I said last week. Like, And that's why she doesn't want him to touch her, because she's in his house and she doesn't want it to get weird, but it is already weird. Yep. But I'm like, how do these women fall for this horseshit? I don't understand. This is why I think like maybe Danielle's into it too. Like maybe she's a cuck and watching them fuck. I don't know because it's so weird. And then we get to the end of the episode. We'll get to it. But like we see what he ends up doing. I don't know. The last line from Garrick Merrifield is that I'm being refined by God through this breakup with Natalia. Every step that God puts me through mm. makes me a better man. I'm like, oh, really? Really? A better man to your wife while you're on fuckations constantly with these Brazilian women. Who cares about fucking Danielle? A better man to your husband. I mean, excuse me, to your children. No, seriously. A better man to your family. Yep. A better man to your business. A better man to your community. How are you a better man? Yeah. You're worse. <laughs> you're terrible. I just, for me, somebody who comes out of fundamentalist Christianity, like I was a missionary, honey. Mm -hmm. Like I was involved in the church. I mean, and I'm out of it. Um, I still definitely have an affinity and would consider myself a Christian, but not like most Christians, but I am a Christian. But like just to hear him talk in the vernacular of church and Bible and Christianity, talking about being refined by fire, talking about God and how, proce how the process works when God is taking you through your suffering so he can take you to your good. I'm just like, oh my God, it's an affront to me. I'm very offended by it. Yes. I have a hard time watching this guy. It's really gross. And you know they're going to bring him back. Oh yeah. He's the golden ticket. He's yeah. who we are all watching. But like at the same time, I'm getting filled with rage yeah. watching him and hearing him say these things week after week and doing these things, I being a know. fucking predator. I He's know. a literal predator. 100%. And I have no compassion for his wife. None. I know. I, after this season, I'm like, screw you, Danielle. Yep. And it's so weird. Like at the end of their segment, Danielle's like, yeah, we are looking for another person. I'm like, so you too? Y'all fucking? Well, she's like, I really want a sister. Mm -hmm. I really want a sister. I need a friend. She doesn't have any friends. She doesn't mm -hmm. have any women around her or supporting her and talking to her straight like we would. Yeah. She's got nobody. She's very much wants it and or wants to have some kind of a bisexual relationship with the woman. She wants a scissor sister. Maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe. And then we have the conclusion because we don't get a reunion or a tell-all, which I feel very offended by. Yeah. But we have the Ryans who are still dating Yari, apparently. So, okay, I guess she's fine with polygamy. I don't know. And Becky is there sometimes. Uh, they're at the beach and they're seeming to have fun. And I don't get it. I mean, uh, there's never been a more unsexy trio, if you ask I me. I, but an unsexy quartet are the Davis. Yeah. So. <laughs> But yeah, super gross. Speaking of the Davis family, they're no longer dating Jasmine, but they are dating another woman. OK, setting so, up their storyline for exactly. season six. Yeah, we're probably going to see her as if she's brand new right. when they've been dating her for this whole entire time. Then we have the Sherwoods mm -hmm. who are apparently still looking for a sister wife, even though in this show they said that they were going to pause it indefinitely. What, whatever. Yeah. And they're looking and Ashley's getting catfish. Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a greater couple. And also, they have not spoken to Sarah. Yes. The young woman who they were trying to lure into their devious scheme. I mean, why would they? If I was Sarah, I would have blocked their asses. Oh, God, yes. Bye. Yes. And then we have the Shibooties. Yep. They're also apparently dating a new chick named Ebony. I wish we could have seen that. Hi. I wonder if that was the scene. I don't know. That we saw the preview of. And then somehow we get she's removed like i don't i have no idea very rude and then danielle and garrick they're no longer dating miriam because she came to her senses and was like those people are fucking weird mm -hmm. no thank you they are dating a new woman though and garrick like on their first meeting baptizes her and proposes her proposes to her and guess where she's from brazil brazil the fact that he 
like John the Baptist, is taking this woman into the ocean to baptize her as if he's some kind of a pastoral figure, Mm -hmm. as if he's some kind of a reverend, chaps my hide like I can't even articulate. Like, holy fuck. I know. Like, when you die, if you're... Christianity is real. Do you know how much trouble you're in, my guy? Oh, time? my God, so much trouble. <laughs> oh, what a talking to you are going to have. Oh, my God. You're going to end up in hell. Oh, yeah. The hell of your making. Yep. He's going to be in the Dante's Inferno and be like, what? I thought I was going to be in, in heaven. <laughs> Where's all those God? fucking thieves and popes? <laughs> And Satan's like, dude, you're my favorite guy right yeah. now. <laughs> you're great. <laughs> 100%. Like, oh, I God. couldn't believe I laughed out loud when we saw that picture of this chick that he proposes to because you know he did that just just to fuck fuck. that's all it is but to attach that to baptism i can't the heresy the sacrilege and then he's saying we're gonna try and get her on a k-1 visa so i thought the k-1 visa didn't work in Brazil with Natalia because the judge found out that you guys were polygamous. So now you guys are going to no, try no, no, it again? No, the K-1 visa is the fiancé visa. He was trying to bring her in under a marriage visa. Oh. And so they had sussed out that he was with Danielle, although not married. So it's a different visa. I'm not sure like what the rules and regulations are. But yeah, he's but, trying to bring her in on a 90-day fiancé visa. Even then, I thought that was the reason why he was all upset about the K-1 with Natalia or whatever, because it was going to take longer, right? Mm-hmm. So then, okay. He just wants to fuck. Doesn't make any he just sense. Wants, he just wants her to make a commitment. He wants to be able to spend his fuckation <sighs> banging her. And then he wants to go back to Colorado and do it all over again, which is what literally makes them sex traffickers. To yes. Me. It, except they're not trafficking them anywhere. Yeah. They like go to their countries, they bang them out, and then yep. he goes back to Colorado and he does it all over again. And he's like totally spending so much fucking money going to Brazil all the fucking time. How? I Where do they understand. get their money? TLC, maybe? Maybe they're spending it's the not TLC that, It's money? not that great money. I don't know. I don't think it's good money. I don't think the Browns were making like really good money for like until like six, seven years in. It took a while for them to make some good money. You're telling me the Merrifields have the kind of money where they can travel like this, not tend to their business? Well, I guess her brother's doing all the work. Yeah. Spend tens upon tens of thousands of dollars to just bang women and dump them? I don't know, but they're obviously spending a lot of money. Maybe they're going into debt. Oh, God, I don't I know. I have no idea. I would love to see their coins, like we always say. Well, uh, we know like... that they just sold their home, the one yeah, that we see right. them in, in January of this year for, I think, $2 million. Oh I don't know where they're going to live now and what they're going to do, but I'm just... I... I don't know. I just can't. Like, how can you justify going to Brazil just to fuck all these women in the name of God? Like, if that's actually what you're doing or if that's just all for the show. Like, maybe their whole, like, Christianity thing is just for TV. But I don't know. Danielle's family seems religious. They seem also reasonable. Yeah. I don't have any idea. I mean, at least with Cody Brown and at least with Mormon polygamy, there is the religion and the spirituality and the values that are attached to it. Like they do actually have to be married before they even kiss typically, except you know, Cody Brown, he went and took that kiss when Christine was given birth, Mm. but they have that value. So like, I just don't even understand what these people are doing. They're making up their own rules as they go. Totally. But saying it's coming from God, which is so blasphemous. So then you're God. I don't know. I just hate him so much. I know. So the season is over. Yeah. We can take a break from the Mary fields we and their can. transparent rubbery faces but speaking of sister wives yeah we're gonna bring back sister wife rewinds oh yeah that's right yeah we're so starting we next did week. pause that after garrison brown's passing but we're gonna start that next week since seeking sister wife is over with and i know y- a lot of y'all are gonna be happy mm-hmm. don't come on instagram asking me <laughs> oh my when God. we're gonna start them because i'm telling you right now we're gonna start next week yeah and we've been telling you like we've we are bringing you. them back at the end of like vpr and at the yeah. end of this series but like we just had a lot on our plate that we were covering yeah well before we go is there anything else that we have to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go on to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review Ah. nothing less whoa it's better be nice oh my gosh it really helps us grow the pot (laughs) so thank you so much we will be back later this week in fact i think tomorrow to talk about vanderpump rules that also is wrapping up and we are almost done with the valley so if you've been hanging out with us for that make sure you come on back and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and 
Peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.